Thanks for joining us for Beyond the Minute, where we take a deep dive into the weekly real estate numbers so you can better understand the current market and we can provide you the knowledge and insight you need to have the confidence to dominate this market and your next real estate transaction. Welcome to the Monday Morning Market Minute. Single family inventory from South San Francisco to Redwood City right now is 163. That's up 10% from last week's 147. We had 63 homes come on the market. Now that's the largest number for 2019 and we had 42 homes go into contract. That's very healthy. It's exactly what we like to see week in and week out. Condominiums right now, 76 condominiums on the market. That's up slightly from last week's 73. We had 26 condominiums come on the market and 16 condominiums going to contract. Last week, that number was 16. That's a very healthy number. So total, total from South San Francisco to Redwood City, single family homes and condominiums inventory is 239. And now your hosts with over 60 years of local Bay Area experience and hundreds of millions of dollars of closed real estate transactions, Timothy and Dan Gilmartin. Hello, this is Dan Gilmartin sitting down with the president of the Gilmartin Group, the realtor's realtor, my brother, Timothy D. Gilmartin. Welcome to the 17th episode of Beyond the Minute, where Tim and myself continue to unpack the Monday Morning Market Minute. Good morning, Tim. Morning, Dan. So it's April 29th, 2019, the last Monday of April of, in 2019, and I think we can officially say we're past the holiday season. Last week, inventory went down, which was frankly a bit surprising, but this week, single-family inventory rose 10%, which seemed to be right on track, and something to take note, there were 63 new single family listings, which was the highest, it's the highest number of single family home listings in one week for 2019. I'm pretty sure if we look back for quite some time, we won't find a week as high as that. Uh, although, if you look at last year and the last couple of weeks of April, it was in the mid 50s to high 50s per week of, of listings. So the, you know, April, uh, April 1st to me is always like the, the beginning of the marketplace when people say sell in the spring. Mm -hmm. And well here, they're actually early because I think most people still don't show up till June 1st. So being in, in the, on the market by the end of April is really a strong move by the sellers who want to sell right now. Absolutely. You know, and that being said, you know, our, the macro picture, our macro meaning the, the mid peninsula <laughs> in terms of sure. the, the Bay Area, it's a micro, but our macro picture inventory is still relatively low. Absolutely. I'd say what's the inventory now still only at uh, uh, a, total, like total. a third of 1%, I believe. Yeah. Total total was 239. 239. So oh, we have 100. That's a four, one fourth of 1%. We have 163 single family homes on the market and 76 condominiums on the market at the moment. Yeah. So the total inventory being about 84,000, right? Eight, no, 88,000, excuse me. Potential, so, you mean so 220, the, the, the 220 uh, for sale out of 88,000 is like one quarter of 1%. So you kind of see where we are standing on that there. <laughs> you know, we haven't. We haven't really touched on that number in a while. And in the Monday morning market minute, I, I from time to time try to bring that scenario to light. Yeah. So let's do that again. Out of the, all the inventory, you know, of all the homes that are available, 84. In the sample area you're yeah, tracking, right? Yeah, There's 88,000. Yeah. 66,000 homes and 22,000 condominiums and townhomes, basically. And there's only 239 on the market. Pretty amazing. Now, I don't know the exact number, but for the Realtor Board, uh, San the Mateo. Multiple listing service. Multiple listing service. I believe the number is like 3,000. I could be wrong, plus or minus. Total number of agents? Yeah. That's about to right. Have, have a license. Probably about right. I would say in this market where, that we talk about from South City to Redwood City, I would conservatively say I've counted about 1,600 or so. Okay. So, yeah. 16, so we have 1,600 agents. Yeah. 236 homes trying to sell. to sell 239 homes that's eight agents to a house you should get eight <laughs> offers what happens <laughs> right. well we know that half the agents last year didn't sell anything so then we can say four agents to a house for the half the agents that are selling property yeah yeah the expired cancel and withdrawn number went down with seven and the price reductions number jumped to 14 from nine 
And as you recall, the last couple of weeks, we're, that number was hovering around nine, and it did nine last year and the year before that. And it was really... It was a whole set of nines, as I recollect. <laughs> yes, Three a or lot four of, nines. of them in a row. Yeah. So um, I think that speaks to a very interesting how, you know, the cancellations, withdrawals, expires actually went down. And yes, there's more inventory this year than there were last year. So that's probably why we would see more price reductions, even though in a low inventory market that we're, that we're in. Well, you know, you get cancels and withdrawals when people don't think they can sell their home and they just quit, mm -hmm. right? You get price reductions when people think they can sell their home, but, the, but they haven't gotten it sold yet. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that's that's the difference. So, you know, when you're when your cancel withdrawals are going down, which should be happening right now, because the selling season is hot as all get out right now, too. Meaning if your home is a sellable home, it should sell right now. Uh, and if it hasn't, it's frankly just because the price doesn't match the benefits. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a good value yet because buyers are smart. They do know what value is. And, and, and as hot as the market is, they, you know, they won't overpay if, 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 unless they're in a super competition, which you have to create with the right asking price. Mm hmm. Lastly, we had 37 single family homes close escrow last week. Mm -hmm. And the list price to sales price ratio for those closed transactions was 104. Okay, interesting. So down down a point, but you know, yeah. You know, you know, week to week that number could change dramatically just depending on what homes sold. Right. So Re remember though that's still up from the 100.1. We're up right. 4 or 5% just on that number. Uh, from a list to sale price ratio, which doesn't mean anything other than the energy of the marketplace, because frankly, uh, the, the, the energy was such that the, the, the prices weren't being overbid at the beginning of the year, and now they're being overbid. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, you know, any other thoughts that are, that from hearing these numbers? And you just got back from vacation, so I know you were probably stewing a little bit. Hopefully, you didn't think too much about real estate. But uh, do you have any uh, fresh new thoughts uh, after hearing this and having this quick conversation about where we're at? Well, I think this market actually has proven to be almost in the exact same position as last year. And I think we would all agree that last year was the best year we've had in forever. Mm. So that means the market's about as good as it's ever been. You know, uh, uh, we started off the year by saying squishy, good for buyers, good for sellers. Right now, it's a little bit better for sellers than it is for buyers, quite frankly, because the sellers are getting over asking price. But remember last year, they were getting 110, 112% over ask. Right now we're at 104, 105, which again means, that just means there's fewer offers per listing, which is still better for the buyer in, in terms of having a chance to buy the home they wanna buy. And obviously that could also be directly correlated to the fact that there's more homes on the market. That all works together, that's all right, part of it, obviously, right? Obviously, yeah. You know, um, open houses this, this weekend though, uh, did seem, that the foot traffic did seem to be a little lighter. Maybe it was because some of these buyers were get, finally getting in their spring break. Uh, not sure the weather wasn't, you weren't here, but it wasn't like awesome right here in the mid pen. Uh, there were uh, some sporting events going well, on. Well, let me tell you something. I was driving up Highway 5 and I think everybody was out there with me, <laughs> just so you know. Uh, and I do think that actually it was still the end of the holiday season. I mean, you know, for instance, the, the Catholic schools, they take their Easter vacation the Thursday before Easter through the following week, which means yesterday was their day to be coming home. So that's just a percentage of the population that's out of town right at, at that point in time, which is all part of what we deal with all throughout the month of April between property taxes, income taxes, the Easter holiday, the Passover. Passover was also last week, which ended, I believe, on fr Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of those things kind of came together. Uh, there's, that, that's just a big, that's a, a majority group of people. Mm -hmm. You know, only time will tell, but I have a feeling that with the inventory, you know, this little bump in inventory, if you will, this could be a very good week for a buyer. I think you're right. And I think it'll also prove to whether, whether the market truly is as strong as it was last year, or we're actually kind of on that squishy edge still, yeah. right? I mean, we're, we're, that's why this week by week is really important and why we've tracked it week by week for a long, long time, because you know what, things do turn on a dime uh, uh, and, and you want to be ahead of, ahead of the curve. Right. So that kind of brings this full circle like we do, we've been saying lately, sooner's better than later, sellers. Absolutely. Sooner's better than later. This is the strongest time of the year. Before June, before the end of June is the strongest time of the year. Absolutely. Any other uh, thoughts, any other questions you were getting out there? Haven't really been involved in the right. real estate conversation over the last week as I was hanging out in Palm Desert in 102 degree, degree heat. And, and you know, you made an interesting point uh, last week on how, you know, their, their prices down there, they still haven't, they're they not. haven't reached their peak from 2007 still. They're still 
Some homes are up, but quite frankly, there's just so much open land and ability to add homes, even though I don't see anything getting built, quite frankly, from a residential perspective down there right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but their values are still not back to peak, and people are actually down there buying, making good value, good purchases. And we could f- flip the, uh, let's go the other way uh, in terms of California here. Well, let's go north. Yeah. Same same scenario. Once Although, again, once you, if you get outside the Bay Area itself, Bay Area proper, last check I had actually still two couple a couple of cities in the Bay Area had not reached their previous peak value on an average basis. You know, a house by house thing is different than on an average pricing basis. But once you get outside the Bay Area, the rest of the marketplace is still, still reaching for their 2000, 2007, 2008 value that they haven't achieved as of yet. And, I, and, and for our listeners, if, if you really hear that, that's just amazing. Yes. Because could be a lost cycle for them or there could be that much opportunity available which also means here as well right just amazing yeah why why would this cycle stop right now seeming like seemingly you know with the gdp up 3.2 percent and everybody working i can tell you the traffic is terrible out there that means everybody's yeah. working yeah that means there's a lot of income a lot of buying power and buying power is our country's economy absolutely great what a great show um, you want to continue to be in the know about what's really going on with the mid peninsula real estate market, then simply stay tuned to the weekly Monday morning market minute, and then wait to hear the beyond the minute podcast and discover if inventory has a dramatic shift or if sales are staying on pace, or if there's any type of event that actually changes the marketplace. We want to always thank you guys for listening. And if you have any questions, continue to reach out to Tim or myself. And keep going to our website. That's thegilmartins.com. And Tim's email is tim at thegilmartins.com. I'm dan at thegilmartins.com. Plus, when you decide to subscribe to the show on iTunes, Google Play Store, Stitcher, or Spotify, or Pandora, you could feel comfortable. You won't miss out on any of the newest episodes. Also, it would be great if you could give us a five-star review, which makes a big difference in spreading the word out to as many people as possible. Uh, we again, we thank you for uh, listening, and, and we're loving all the positive feedback that we're getting from everybody. And Tim, thank you again for all the great knowledge and the research that you did for today's show. And uh, have a great day, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Thanks, Dan. Right.